If there's, if there's one thing that, that depresses me about uh, the American left is how we have to reinvent all the wheels every 10 years. Oh, you mean, you mean that there were, there, there were people who thought like this in the 19th century? What a surprise, you know? Well, uh, this is because neither in high school nor in college are Americans ever taught anything about this. You have to be an independent scholar, which to my sorrow I am, you know, uh, and, uh, in order, to, in order to, when you begin to drift into this kind of research, you don't have the head of the department saying, remember, tenure, you might not get tenure if you get involved in all this communist anarchist shit, you know. Those, those controls are very real. And it, it, the upshot of it is that nobody knows anything anyway, so they don't care. They don't realize they're being deprived of the chance to study of course, you know, since the 60s, there's been, many, there's been a change in this. Of course, in the, in the 60s, there was a certain radicalization of the academy. Um, we still have some tenured Marxists around, uh, and some of them did pay attention to some of these ideas, and some of them were quite inspirational for me. I was thinking, of, I just finally, after years and years, I met Jesse Lemish, who did some wonderful papers back in the 60s on radical radical sailors in the American Revolution and how the, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't the educated bourgeoisie who were out there punching people, you know, punching British soldiers in the nose. It was drunken sailors, you know. So he has a wonderful essay called Jack Tar, uh, which was, you know, the, what they called the, the average sailor in, in, in those days, uh, as a radical figure in, in the American Revolution. Those kind of uh, scholars from the 60s uh, did some wonderful work and inspired me to go farther. Yeah. Well, I mean, one example, we were talking about pirates in my pirate book earlier. Um, the pirate communities that I was interested in, the, what I called the pirate utopias, um, not so much the ships themselves as the islands where they would set up their, as it turned out, temporary autonomous zones. And none of them lasted more than a few years. Uh, but the, 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 uh, the pirate ship itself can also be seen as, uh, I forget who coined the phrase, the floating republic because each of the ships had no law other than the articles that the, that the sailors had signed amongst themselves. I mean, who was going to tell them what to do except themselves? So basically what you're looking at there is a little anarchist co floating commune. Uh, <clears throat> and in fact, in a lot of cases, even the p position of the captain was not sure. If the crew felt that the captain wasn't, wasn't, uh, wasn't good enough or his luck was bad, that was very important they would depose him and choose somebody else, usually the quartermaster, who was in fact often a more important figure than the captain anyway. Uh, but in, uh, the captains in pirate boats usually only got a very s small, uh, their, their share was only a little bit larger than the share of the average crewman. For example, if the average crew member was getting a single share, the captain would often get no more than two or sometimes even one and a half shares. Uh, whereas in the privateer ships, which were commissioned by governments, the captain would get 40 shares to the crewman single share. So this is the difference between piracy and privateering. Okay. So those, you know, like uh, the buccaneers on Hispaniola or the uh, you know, Captain Mission in Madagascar, these figures were very uh, of, of, of interest already to some radical and anarchist historians, notably Christopher Hill who in the 1970s already began to talk about pirates as radical communities, for which he was roundly criticized by ortho more orthodox Marxist historians uh, who uh, denied that the pirates were anything more than crude uh, proto-capitalists. Well, you know, they're out there seizing gold. That's all they're doing. And they might as well be capitalists. And Hill was, had a much subtler and more sophisticated reading of the situation in which he saw that all kinds of forms of social resistance could be included within this category, this strange category. And so uh, he, he, I believe it was he who coined the term radical pirates, if I'm not mistaken. He's dead now, rest in peace, and I was really, really pleased when he gave me a, a quote for the back of my book because he, w he, he was the dean of radical pirate studies. There's old Marcus Redeker, Peter Leinbau, Jesse Lemish, as I say, was one of the first to be interested in the, 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 the world of the, the Atlantic world of the ship as a, as, a, as, a, as a focus locus for resistance. So there's a little school of us radical piratologists, you know. But most people don't see it that way at all. Even now, they don't see it that way. Uh, 
or, for example, the uh, the so-called triracial isolate communities and maroon communities that we that we studied in uh, going to Croatan. You, you saw that, right? Yeah. So Jan uh, James Conline and, and Ron Sikulski and those people uh, as anarchists entered into this study and um, found ourselves very enthusiastic about uh, some of these isolated groups as being kind of natural dropouts uh, with, with continuity. That's something that's interesting about them is that un unlike many intentional communities, these dropout communities actually sometimes persist, right? And very few intentional communities have persisted, and usually only the religious fanatics. This is a problem. We could get back to that. How? What do we? What can we? What can we, the secular, you know, radical types, possibly find as a substitute for that, that level of fanaticism that allows you to, to forego the advantages of civilization and progress, in order to have something that you consider to be more valuable but much more difficult, which is community. So, those kinds of examples. <laughs>